heard that there is an AIDS epidemic in Ukraine, I was surprised. As many people in Western Europe, I didn't know that there is an HIV epidemic right behind the EU border. Natasha had a lot of bad luck in her youth, but the worst was probably marrying this eight years older man with whom she started to take drugs. She never injected herself, but always had her husband shoot a dose into her neck. Second time pregnant, she even continued to shoot up and was forced by her husband to earn money for prostitution instead of working factory jobs. In the summer of 2005, Natasha had syphilis and not much later she got problems with her legs and could not walk anymore, probably caused by syphilis in combination with the drugs she was taking. She also was tested HIV positive then. Since her husband was not infected, she assumes that she had gotten the virus from a customer. Her children were taken away from her and placed in an orphanage. Natasha was forced to leave the normal hospital because of her HIV status. The AIDS clinic did not have a neurologist who could treat her paralyzed legs. Since then, she has lived in this one-room apartment owned by an aunt of her husband. She sleeps on a mattress on the floor, spends her day watching TV, reading and sleeping. Я имя твое рисовал на песке, вода его с моря смывала. Я песенку пел на родном языке, а ты на своем подпевала. Светанка. Сергей lived with his mother and his niece in one room in a family dormitory. He had bone tuberculosis and was in tuberculosis clinics until recently but had no money to pay for treatment. The only reason for staying in the hospital was to get a disabled status to get some monthly money paid by the state. Sergei began injecting drugs in 1981 and was sent to prison many times because of drug using. In total, he spent 11 years in different prisons all over the country. He was registered as HIV positive in 1999, although he did not learn of his infection himself until 2003 when he was tested in prison. He had a second test to confirm the diagnosis and he planned to have his CD level tested and hoped to undergo antiretroviral treatment if it became necessary. But he died only a few months after I met him. Едут, едут, мазурочки, везут, везут, два виночки, третий золотой, третий золотой стугрюк, в окошечко выйди, сердце на крылечко, стугрюк, в окошечко выйди, сердце на крылечко. When I met Tanya and Jura, Tanya was lying in a tuberculosis clinic because of bone tuberculosis in her leg. She found out that she was HIV positive in 95, but noticed no symptoms until 2005 when she suddenly felt pain in her leg. She and Jura lived together for three years. He had never used drugs and got infected through her, but they said this only made them closer. Tanya came home at Easter, but back in the hospital felt increasingly tired and depressive. She refused to see anyone and complained of constant pain. Her condition was so poor after two weeks that she could no longer open her eyes. Jura and one of Tanya's old friends stayed constantly at her bedside. They tried to have her transferred to the AIDS hospital and requested a chest x-ray, but the only thing they could reach was to have a catheter put in. First examination revealed that she also had meningitis. She died only a few days later. Паровоз по пути мчится, на пути котенок спит. Паровоз остановился, и котенку говорит, ты, котенок, убирайся, освободи ты мне путь. А котенок отвечает, Проезжай ты как-нибудь, паровоз как рассердился, передавил коту фост, а котенок рассердился, поцарапал паровоз, паровоз лежит.
ходит в больнице с поцарапанным боком, а котенок спит на печке с перевязанным фастом.